El portavoz del ejército israelí, Daniel Gary, ha afirmado que el vehículo blindado en el que iban los ocho militares en Rafa fue alcanzado eh, con una fuerte explosión y se investiga ahora mismo si fue debido a un artefacto colocado en el camino cuando pasó en el paso del convoy o por el disparo de un misil antitanque. El vehículo formaba parte, el llamado vehículo blindado Namera, formaba parte de un convoy militar israelí que regresaba de una incursión nocturna contra el barrio de Tel al Sultán, en la parte oeste de Rafa, situada en el sur de la Franja de Gaza. Horas antes del anuncio oficial del ejército, el brazo armado de Hamas afirmaba que había logrado planear y realizar una compleja emboscada contra vehículos de enemigo y prometió continuar este tipo de ataques. Cabe destacar que el Ministerio de Sanidad Gazatí, en manos de Hamas, afirmaba al mediodía que desde el inicio de la ofensiva militar, 37.296 palestinos han muerto en la franja de Gaza. Israel justifica la ofensiva en la zona de Rafa iniciada a principios de mayo para acabar, dice, con el último gran bastión organizado de la milicia palestina, pero también para cerrar de forma completa los túneles de contrabando de esa zona de Rafa con Egipto y bajo el impacto de la muerte de ocho soldados en el mayor ataque de Hamas contra Israel desde el pasado mes de enero. Este sábado se han vuelto a ver manifestaciones masivas en Tel Aviv, sobre todo, en primer lugar, para exigir un alto el fuego que libere a los secuestrados y también exigir el adelanto electoral. Iván, ahora mismo la situación está estancada después de que Hamas recapitulemos, respondiera a la propuesta anunciada por el presidente Biden, que fue aprobada, según Biden, por Israel, con algunos cambios, mientras Israel afirma que los cambios hacen la respuesta de Hamas una negativa total. El secretario de Estado norteamericano, Antonio Blinken, considera que hay cambios de Hamas que pueden ser factibles, pero otros totalmente inviables para lograr un alto el fuego. Y Estados Unidos intenta lograr este alto el fuego para acabar o aliviar el sufrimiento gazatí, para liberar a los secuestrados y también, como tercer objetivo, para evitar una guerra entre Hezbollah en el Líbano e Israel. The Israeli military saying it has started what they describe as a daily tactical pause in southern Gaza to allow, they say, more aid to reach Palestinians there. The IDF said the pause in the offensive began about an hour ago, 8 a.m. local time, and lasts until 7 p.m. local time every day until further notice. The IDF says the decision came after discussions with the United Nations and international aid agencies. Scott Anderson is the director of UNRWA Affairs in Gaza. He joins me live from Gaza. And thanks for uh, popping up and helping us out here. Of course, we have no idea how this pause would work in terms of coordinating aid coming in and just as importantly, it being safely distributed. What are your hopes and concerns? Thanks for having me on this morning. I do appreciate it. Uh, secondly, since the operation in Rafa started in early May, uh, the international humanitarian community has struggled to get enough aid into Gaza to take care of all the innocent civilians and children in particular. Um, as we've moved to Karim Shalom, which is our main pipeline for aid coming into Gaza, convoys have been near kinetic activity as close as 50 meters away. So what we're hopeful is that this pause, which we thank Israel for putting in place, will allow us to move freely in and out of the crossing and bring in much needed aid for the population. Yeah, yeah. And the initial reports are that this will impact aid only through Karem Shalom crossing from Israel to Gaza. Is that going to be enough with the Rafah crossing from Egypt not mentioned in what's being said so far? And there are miles of trucks on that side. Yeah, we very much hope so. I mean, the aid is very much needed for people uh, here in Gaza. They need food, they need medicine, water, tents, really everything that you would uh, expect for your basic necessities every day. There is a lot of aid currently at the crossing awaiting pickup, and we very much hope that this uh, long pause every day will allow us to move freely back and forth. Uh, we hope that Hamas and other parties of the conflict respect this decision that Israel has taken so we can get the much needed aid into Gaza. And it is, as I said, it's very much needed. Uh, our number one concern right now is clean drinking water for people, 
as well as getting aid in. Uh, the only concern we have is that the larger law and order environment in Gaza is not really conducive right now to, to making easy movements with logistic trucks, but we hope we can work through that. How, how has the Rafah crossing being closed by Israel's Rafah offensive impacted the aid situation? And, and, and how much is on the other side of that border waiting to come in? Would, would you be calling for Rafah to open as well? Uh, certainly, and it's primarily for two reasons that we'd like to see Rafa open. The first is that's how we used to import fuel. It was much faster coming in, and we put it in our tanks that are near the Rafa crossing for onward distribution into Gaza. Uh, diesel is really the lifeblood of, of our response. It, it runs everything. Generators at hospitals uh, allows us to pick up trash, to move aid, all these things that are very critical for the population. And secondly, and most importantly, with the state of uh, secondary and tertiary care in Gaza, that was the primary way that people got out uh, for medevac. Mm. Uh, there's about 14,000 people currently on the list waiting to get into Egypt where they could access secondary and tertiary care. And that's something we very much hope begins again very soon. This is one of the single deadliest incidents for Israeli soldiers operating in Gaza that we've seen since the start of the war. According to the Israeli military, early Saturday morning at about 5.15 in the morning, an armored personnel carrier came under attack from what they described as a side bomb. Now, from their description, it's unclear if somehow this bomb was affixed to the armored vehicle or if it was fired at or, or as a projectile at the side of the vehicle. Now, the vehicle itself, the armored personnel carrier, was carrying explosives as part of a combat engineering unit, and somehow these exploded. Now, that's a problem for the Israeli military because it should be resistant to anything that would cause the explosives on board the armored personnel carrier to detonate. The explosion, the IDF says, was, quote, significant. Uh, and they say it was difficult then to locate the remains of the vehicle itself and the remains of the soldier, this uh, soldiers on board, this occurring in the Tal al-Sultan area of northwest Rafah, where the Israeli military has been operating as they have slowly moved throughout the city there in southern Gaza. Now, the IDF says the incident itself is still under investigation. Uh, they have put out the name of at least one of the soldiers killed there as they work to notify uh, the other family, uh, families of the soldiers that were killed. Meanwhile, the Al-Qassam Brigades, Hamas's military wing, says they laid a complex trap for an armored personnel carrier of the IDF. First, they say they attacked a military bulldozer, and then when an extraction unit or rescue unit came, that's when they say they fired a missile at that armored personnel carrier. We will learn more as the IDF's uh, investigation into the incident continues. It's also worth pointing out that Rafa's civil, uh, civil defense unit uh, says that there was continuous artillery fire and aerial shelling in the Tal al-Sultan neighborhood since early Saturday morning. They are likely describing the same incident there. Again, that is under investigation from the Israeli military. Meanwhile, as all of this is happening on Saturday night, widespread and large protests against the government, easily tens of thousands taking to the streets of Tel Aviv, but not just there in Jerusalem and in other places as well. You see the anger, the frustration there at Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his government with far-right elements. In Haifa, Orrin Lieberman, CNN.